Whew, I gotta be honest, this is weird for me, because like James said, I'm a, uh, a stand-up comedian, so. <laughs> oh, fans of comedy here, that's good. Good start, good start. Uh, yeah, I'm usually following like an unfunny comic who's come out and he's bombed. But instead, I'm following uh, an engineer from NASA <laughs> who's just like blown away the crowd, and Mary Sue, who just, I believe, passed around cookies. <laughs> Like, how, how do I follow cookies? <laughs> like, you guys are all enjoying them. I feel like I should have brought milk. I feel unprepared. <laughs> so, yeah, this will be interesting for me. At this point, uh, usually when I'm on stage, I'm at this point, I'm like, you know, telling gay jokes and over explaining my gender. Uh, but instead, I'm here, like, Googling things about space <laughs> and trying to find, like, some inspirational quotes, like Nelson Mandela or something, you know? So it should be interesting for me. I'll start with this. Uh, my name is A.B. Cassidy. I am a stand-up comedian based in Los Angeles. And uh, I have no idea what I'm doing here today. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to be honest with you throughout this whole thing, OK? Because you're going to hear from a lot of people, as, as we already have, you know, about whatever you know, failure led to their uh, now success. Uh, but to be real, I have no success, OK? This, <laughs> I'm still in the failure part. <laughs> I am. I'm serious. This is actually the most successful thing I've ever done. Like this. <laughs> this is it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I'm like in the moment right now. So like what am I going to talk about? Uh, great question. I have no idea. I'm so serious. I don't know why they called me. Uh, but I'm excited about it. I'll tell you that. Because here's the thing that I, I, I do feel educated enough to talk about is that failure is really, really hard. And I also know that every time that I fail as a comedian, every time I bomb on stage or I fail, that I get better. So I remember the very first time I ever did uh, comedy. Uh, it was at college. I went to the University of Redlands, about an hour east of here. And I was part of a really great program called the Johnson Center for Integrative Studies. And they actually allowed me to study stand-up comedy, which probably sounds like the craziest thing you've ever heard. <laughs> Uh, it was a program where you designed your own major, and my emphasis uh, was the art of storytelling through comedy and feminism. So uh, I did study stand-up, amongst other things. Uh, I studied creative writing, nonfiction. I studied theater, feminist film theory. Uh, but they knew that I had a passion uh, for, for stand-up, so they allowed me to study these fields through a comedic lens. I really have to give them credit because I wouldn't be where I'm at today, you know, without them. It's, it was a pretty amazing opportunity and they allowed me to do other really great things like teach a class on women in comedy where I got to study the styles and techniques of a lot of really, uh, you know, amazing women. And uh, I also got to produce uh, comedy shows. So I brought in Wanda Sykes and Tig Notaro and a lot of these women that I really respected. But here's the thing, I wasn't performing with them, I was the producer, I was the producer on these shows, so I was watching from the sides, from, from the wings of the stage, if you will. And I would see them from afar and I'd think like, wow, that's so amazing. And I kind of got this bug, it was like a little bite that kind of inspired me, like I want to do that. But even though I had done theater my whole life, I didn't, I didn't think I was capable of doing stand-up. I was like, I don't know what I'd have to say, what I'd talk about, so I would just watch them from afar. But I got the bug, okay? So I, I had it planted in me, like, oh, maybe I could try that one day. So uh, a few weeks after my uh, show with Wanda Sykes, the Johnson Center was doing an open mic. And I finally found the courage to try stand-up. And by courage, I mean vodka. There was a lot of vodka <laughs> involved, okay? But I got up there, I did a set, and, uh, and it went really well. What did I talk about? Okay, uh, that's a great question. I don't actually know. I blacked out. Uh, not from the booze, not from the booze, from the fear, okay? Just <laughs> gone. Uh, but I think I did well because people were coming up after and they were like, wow, that was amazing. You, you had to do this more often. That was so funny. And I'll tell you, I felt incredible. I was like, oh my gosh, I can do this. This is something I'm really good at. So I kind of got like in my head, like, all right, this is great. I'm going to do this. So at the next open mic, I got up again. And I tried to pull from, you know, some of the material that I had remembered from the last time. And this time, I bombed. <laughs> like, really bombed. 
I was basically just saying words that didn't make sense. <laughs> I was like, uh, apples and bananas, it's crazy. It was, wow, okay. Like it was, it was just like nonsense. People got up and left, okay? They were, they were out. And I actually didn't even end on a joke. I didn't even like wrap up my set. I just was like, okay, that's enough. <laughs> I just <laughs> got off stage. Like I couldn't handle it. It was humiliating. And uh, I actually remember hiding from people for days. Like I hid, I was so embarrassed. Because it felt like public humiliation. You know, you're up there and you're being vulnerable. And you know, it's hard to do that. And I think that we all, you know, can relate to that somehow because I think that we've either had public humiliation or we, you know, in one way or other, it's, it's mostly, you know, I'm not Dr. Castell Pastel, but uh, <laughs> I don't, I don't know much about the mind, but I do know a lot of people have this fear of public humiliation. You know, that's why people get scared when they're public speaking. They say, oh, think about people in their underwear. Or when you, know, you dream, everyone has this common dream that the biggest fear is showing up somewhere naked, like to work or to school. Which, by the way, I don't get those dreams. I know that's like a thing for people, so that's why I'm bringing it up. But I don't have that. Like, I feel like if I was naked in a dream, it would be a nightmare. You know, let's just say that. Be a nightmare. But yeah, that's you know, public humiliation. We all have this fear. So here's the thing. How do you come back from public failure? Well, here's the truth. It was an open mic on a Saturday night. People are drinking. No one even really remembered it. It wasn't that big of a deal. <laughs> OK? There was no need for me to be hiding. But we are our own worst critics. So to me, this mistake was actually colossal. And I was like, I could never do that again. So the next year, I uh, graduated, I moved to Los Angeles, and I moved with my friend Harry. And Harry really wanted to do stand-up, so he's, okay, come with me to these shows. And the thought of me getting back on stage made me actually want to vomit. So I was like, uh, I'll go with you, and I'll watch. Now keep in mind, these are open mics in Los Angeles. So, you know, it's not like great comedy clubs like the Improv, Laugh Factory. This isn't even, we're at places people don't even want to see comedy, you know? I'm talking like sports bars, and <laughs> by sports bars, I mean Hooters, okay? <laughs> I told you, I'm gonna be very honest throughout this. We're, you know, I, by the way, I'm pretty sure that I am the last thing that people go to Hooters to see, okay? <laughs> like, I'm definitely not the top three most exciting things at Hooters. So I'd see Harry go to these things and I'd think like, you know, this is cool, but like, what do I have to say that is important or funny enough that I could get up and distract someone from their game and be like, pay attention. Like I didn't, I didn't have that confidence, but Harry did. And Harry would get up and he'd get off the stage and he'd, he'd work out material with me. Oh, I think this joke did well this time or maybe this. And I could see him getting better. And it was at that point that I realized that by not getting up at all, I was failing. That was failure, because I wasn't at least trying to do well. I wasn't trying to get better. I had just failed that one time, and it was hard to fail, so I quit. But that, I then realized, meant I couldn't do comedy. I could either just quit, because failure is hard, or I could at least try, and try to get better. I could, you know, go on, fail on, if you will. So I uh, told myself that the next open mic Harry goes to, uh, I'm going to get up. And I remember it was actually the day that Joan Rivers died. And I remember because I thought, wow, this would be a really iconic day to start comedy. And I laugh about that now because it was not an iconic <laughs> day to start comedy. We went to this open mic. It was about one microphone stand with a bunch of empty benches and it was in the back of a grocery store. <laughs> Not kidding you, people were shopping, okay? They were literally shopping in the aisles. <laughs> but I told myself, I'm gonna get up. I was like, I'm gonna do this. And I had written a set. I had done my material and everything, and as I'm like waiting to get called up on stage, I look out, I literally I saw a woman in aisle four examining a soup label, <laughs> and she's like this, and, and I could hear the check, I'm like, beep, beep. I'm standing there like nervous, like, all right, I got this. <laughs> Don't worry, you guys do your thing. I'm just trying to, you know, achieve my dreams over here. <laughs> Paper or plastic, pick one already. I'm getting on the stage. 
Okay, so I got up and uh, I was really excited. Like I said, I was prepared this time. You know, no vodka, wrote a set. And I was really excited and I bombed even worse. <laughs> I was so awful. And I'll tell you something, it wasn't that easy to just accept that failure, you know, to be like, oh, well, I could just, no, it was, it was soul sucking. It was literally draining. I was like, that was mortifying. And uh, I was like, I'm never, ever, ever doing this again. It was the worst feeling. So a few weeks passed and a good friend of mine invited me to a comedy show, actually out here uh, in Pasadena at the Ice House, which is a very famous club. It's been around for a long time. And she said, I have a friend who's performing. He's a really big headliner. There's a guy named Jeff Garcia. He's a big national touring headliner. She said, why don't you come? I can introduce you before the show. And at that point, I had kind of left comedy. I wanted to start doing voiceovers. And he was a big voiceover guy. He does you know, Jimmy Neutron and Happy Feet. So I said, OK, well, I'll pick his brain. So I went before the show, and I met him. And he turned out to be the nicest guy ever. And uh, we start talking. And he says, well, what are you doing in LA? And I said, comedy. And he said, oh, do you do stand-up? I said, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then he said, great. How many minutes do you have? As in, how, long, how much material do you have? How long can you do? And here, I'm all of a sudden feeling so silly for trying to tell this massive headliner, trying to pass as a comedian, when I've done two open mics for less than 30 seconds. <laughs> and it was just awful. And so I said, uh, how many minutes? Uh, five. Five minutes. <laughs> and then he said, great. I'll put you up tonight. You can do five. OK, yeah, I hear the oohs. That's how I felt. <laughs> I, you're telling me. I, I literally was like, I've made the worst mistake of my life. <laughs> and keep in mind, this is no longer a, a grocery store or Hooters. This is a big club. This is the Ice House. It's a Friday night. It's packed. 300 plus people sold out. Huge headliner. And my last two shows were just terrible. So I was like, I've made the worst mistake of my life. And I need to get out of this. And before I could say anything to him, uh, Jeff actually approached me. And he said, he came up to me and whispered, he said, hey, I know you're new. I know this is one of your first times. <laughs> but this, and he points to the stage, this is how you get better. And at that point, I realized that he was right. And if I hadn't gotten up, then I had already failed. I had failed because I denied the opportunity to open for this big headliner. I'd just been like, no, it's going to be hard. But I realized that if I got up, I at least had a chance of not failing, of maybe being OK. And I know this sounds like really cheesy, but it kind of reminded me, like, this is where I feel like I actually could use like, like one slide with like an inspirational <laughs> quote right now. <laughs> like, I'm starting to get the whole slide thing. Like, I feel like, I feel like I need just like a picture of Wayne Gretzky that's like, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. <laughs> Because that's how I felt. I was like, all right, I'm going to Wayne Gretzky this. So I did it. I got up, sold, sold out Joe. And keep in mind, this is Jeff Garcia. He's, he's Mexican, he, you know, Latino comic. His whole audience, all of his, you know, his whole fan base are Latinos. And to put this in perspective, the other comics did their sets in Spanish. <laughs> OK? So not only was I the, the only white girl there, but I was definitely the only diesel dyke, OK? <laughs> like, I got on that stage, and they did not know what I was. <laughs> like, half of them thought I was a guy, and by half, I mean all of them. <laughs> it felt like going up and having a gender reveal party. <laughs> I feel like I should have been like, I should have done what Mary Sue did and pass around cupcakes, you know? and just put a little pink frosting in the middle so we all could just <laughs> take a bite at the same time. Like, oh, it's a girl. <laughs> like, that would have been easier for me. But I think we can be honest with each other. I think about half the people in this room also thought I was a dude until about a minute ago when I called myself a diesel dyke. 
Someone back there is like, I told you, five bucks, let's go. <laughs> and it's my dad. <laughs> so I got up there and uh, you know what? I didn't actually do that bad. I didn't bomb, I actually did okay. I did all right. I didn't do my set in Spanish, but uh, I, I did okay. And I remember coming off like, wow, that wasn't that bad. And that's when I realized that that's kind of how it goes in stand-up, you know? Like, you never know. Like, you could fail one time, but then do great the other time doing the same set. That's what stand-up is. It's, it's about learning different venues and different crowds. And so I started to welcome that failure. I was like, oh, it's actually a really good thing when I fail. I know, oh, this joke doesn't work here. This doesn't work in an auditorium. Or this works only in this kind of club. Or this works with this crowd. So it, it, my failure, I started to grow from it. I started to welcome that failure. And the crazy thing is, is Jeff Garcia actually became my mentor and I started featuring touring around the country for him. And now my very small fan base is all Latinos, okay? <laughs> I, have, I have no white fans and I love it. It's amazing. So, you know, here's the thing. Yes, failure is really hard. But you shouldn't let that stop you. You should let that start you. Ooh, that was a good one. That's like... <laughs> I don't even need Wayne Gretzky. <laughs> We've heard from a lot of people here today that failure apparently <laughs> leads to success. <laughs> and I wish I could tell you. I wish I really could say, oh, well, I, you know, bombed and then... I got a Netflix special, I got a, com a show on Comedy Central, and I, I, I'm not kidding, I'm still in the failure part, you know? So I can't attest to that yet. But I'm here, aren't I? I'm doing a, a TEDx talk, and I'm at this amazing school and sharing a stage with brilliant people. So it's like, I I'm here, I'm doing this, I'm telling Diesel Dyke jokes, something's, you know, <laughs> that's gotta count for something, right? Thank you. One person, yes. <laughs> Follow me around, please. Yes. I like that. Okay, good. Yeah, it counts for something. <laughs> just because you have a chance of failing doesn't mean you should at least try. If you just quit because it's hard, then you failed. Regardless, you failed. But if you at least try and attempt, then there's a chance you won't fail. And that's a chance worth taking. Failure is hard, but don't let it stop you. Thanks.